welcome to Amazon Podcast, episode number eight. So, I'm here today. It's a it's a Friday Friday beers. Already started. It's not seven o'clock yet. <laughs> um, I'm here today with uh, Oliver and Rasmus, and uh, we. I'm I'm really excited. I don't know about you guys. I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. We have got a lot to talk about today. Um, firstly, we've got. Like a new era coming. Hopefully, I'm gonna put some cool music at the start <laughs> and like doo, 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 doo. new era of Amazon podcast. Here we go. So we've had a little bit of a chat between us, and we've decided that we've got so many listeners now. I think we have 48 subscribers. Relatively <laughs> many yeah. listeners. Nearly, nearly 50 subscribers, Woo-hoo! and a lot of views on YouTube. So. We're gonna go pro. We're gonna we're gonna bite the bullet and we're gonna go pro. And hopefully that means for you guys that it's gonna be more regular. It's yes. gonna be a bit more, a bit less maybe with more yeah. beers. It, it'll be easier <laughs> to bring us along. More professional, yeah. yeah. In the future, going forward. So that's what we're gonna aim for. Hopefully this will be now up on SoundCloud. We'll see. And um, yeah, so that's that's exciting because it's like mm-hmm. our time, Mark Two. More professional, probably gonna have like music and adverts and all sorts of different things. So yeah, be excited for that. Um, also, really excited about version 1.0. Yeah. When, when is it coming? Yeah. Is it coming today? Is it coming next week? Is it coming in May? As long as the Ocean Ball in it. I'm happy. <laughs> Ocean Born. <laughs> like, By the way, they could have been yeah. really good. Yeah, kudos to the team for you know pulling that <laughs> April Fools, but it, yeah. it was obvious but amazing. <laughs> I had a, I, it got me for about five seconds. <laughs> Ocean born hippos. I want hippos. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I I appreciated the joke and the effort that they went to making it. It was so fun. I think it would have been better if they'd made it more realistic, and then people would have actually been like, "Is this real?" What's unrealistic about a wet sponge as a magical attack <laughs> of <Spongebob>. frying pan? <laughs> yeah. But I think you, you can feel it buzzing all over the forums. Yeah. People want this because everyone's waiting in, in, in anticipation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So from, from what I know, I heard, I heard today is Friday the 15th. I heard it was coming out today. That was one rumor. And then I heard another rumor that it was coming out at the end of the month. And then I know for a fact that the content team, we have a sneaky project in the works that is going to be this first or second week of May is going to be released and that's going to be based on version 1.0 so I know that between now and May we're going to have a new edition so this week and next week is what I'm I'm guessing but oh, it's so cool but no one knows no one knows ah <laughs> it's going to be ah I'm really excited for it but the, the thing is that people should remember to stay positive I can see a lot of people already talking about selling their armies yeah, and come uh, on. remember people right. it's not a big company that's trying to sell you models it's people who try to make the best game possible for yeah, all of us completely so i had a quick conversation actually it was actually coming up from our last podcast where we talked about where the map would be and how it was going to work and uh I, we someone guild us from the night phage executive board commented on the post and i asked him can, can we get a map to look at so we can talk about it on the podcast and he said no but <laughs> he asked me a few like a few questions so the questions that I I asked him were was really related about the fluff and and how the new world is going to work so I asked him about where is the each faction each race going to be based because we, we talked about the the elves being being situated on England and the dark elves in Iceland and the Empire Sonnenstall, style, obviously being in in a the, the kind of the German area, and Bretonia obviously being Equitaine, France, and things like this. So I asked him, where is each faction going to be based? Are there going to be nations or small towns and colonies dotted around? Can we expect a similar spread from the Games Workshop setting? Is it going to be exactly the same, or is it going to be different? Um, I assumed that it was going to be based on Europe, but I wasn't sure, so I asked him that. I asked him, where did the lizard men live? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we don't really have a jungle in Europe, and if that's the case, where are they going to be? 
And uh, will there be room for other completely new factions that we haven't seen yet? Such as Kislev? Like, I really, really want to see a Ninth Age version of Kislev. I think it would be so cool. Yeah, so cool. With like yeah. bear riders and ice magic and... Oh, polar bears. Yes. <laughs> yeah, polar bears. Yeah, armored polar bears. Yeah. I, would, I would drop everything and start that army. Yeah. Right off it. There's a really, really good um, yeah. model from Miss Miniatures, I think it is. Yes. They do like a polar bear or a big bear model with a rider. But, but also, f I know a lot of uh, fluff-based players, yeah. they, they also... Kind of hope for Cathay, yeah. Nippon, yeah, Japanese, yes. Japanese army. You know they they've been all around the world. Yeah. Uh, sorry, um, all the stories. Yeah. Almost every single army book from back when it was uh, Games Workshop yeah. that did their yeah, there's other all, there's game. Loads of them, like Araby. Yeah, and... everyone mentioned it. Yeah. You know, and this is the perfect platform for it as well. It's completely fan made, and you can make it any time. And I would kind of ask him, okay, will there be room for other factions and like maybe a Dogs of War, Italian, Spanish thing as well? And he replied to me and it was quite a general statement, but I thought we can read it out and we can discuss it and you guys can make of it what it's going to be. So here we go. I'm going to read it to you now. So, hi Henry. These are the official answers to your questions. So. The process of building the Ninth Age setting merges fam familiarity with novelty. When they get presented with the final product, the players will on the surface see what they have come to expect from certain fantasy themes associated with their armies, but as they dive deeper they will get to explore all the new things we have developed inspired by our own world's history, geography, mythologies and cultures. We are creating a world that through steeped in magic and inhabited by fantastical creatures will be rooted in realistic motivations of its inhabitants and believable limits of, to the actions of individual and armies. The goal is to have a setting which lives and breathes as our own history did, with all the magnificent events that have happened, as just as well as with the mundane things that usually go unrecorded by scribes. The background will ensure that the world beyond the 16 currently playable armies is explorable and that there are reasons and motivations why any of the factions might want to fight another faction or class among themselves. So, <laughs> what do we learn from that? Well, I think I think the familiar f fantasy setting is going to be similar to what we can expect. I think we're going to see Europe, maybe. I go for it. <laughs> I when I, I've heard this being read out loud once before and. It strikes me right now that the last part of it, it mentions that all the factions should have a cause to fight each other. Yeah. I've always thought that, of course, it's logic when you're playing a game. Yeah. But when you're sitting as an empire playing against, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Are you drinking? They're, 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 all, they're <laughs> all games, but Empire of Sunstall yeah. versus the Kingdom of Equitain. Yeah. I'm like... Why are <laughs> we doing are we this? There's there's a, an army of skeletons coming from the, the <laughs> east, and what? Why are we doing this? Is this purposeless? But if they actually make it plausible, yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, because that that was never there before. Already here, we're yeah. going somewhere. Yeah, like why why are dark elves fighting ogres? Like, come on, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you can really got to use your imagination. Now that's you? obvious. They're raiding them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're not it's, it's, geographically. If, like, yeah. it's easy. Like, Dagos raids their their pirates. Yeah. So they're raiding. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I, that's I, a bad I, example. I, I think that it's it's more specific when you say empire and the uh, of Sunstar uh, versus uh, equality of uh, yeah. what is it called? Uh, Kingdom of Equitain. Like Tomb Kings against High Elves or yeah, that's or crazy shit. Like none of them want to leave their own place. Yeah. <laughs> Dwarves against uh, Every, Empire. Everything, everything else that Empire and Dark Elves versus uh, Lizardmen. Yeah. Dread Elves. Yeah. Dread Elves. Dread Elves. Dread Elves. Dread Elves. Uh, drink. <laughs> drink. Yeah, it's a Twice. drinking game. So yeah, we, we also continue our drinking game the last few weeks. Every time we uh, say the wrong Ninth Age name, we have to drink. <laughs> I got really drunk last weekend. Uh, but, but we're actually getting better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm getting much better. Where's my beer? At making each other drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what I took from this uh, phrase was that I think it seems like they've really thought about the setting. 
and they've really thought about the history and the mythology and the geography and the culture of each faction. It, it, this seems what they're saying, and I, I really, really hope that they've really gone into detail with it. And the more, the more that I can relate to, the better. And if that's if that's kind of based on these fantastical events that have happened in the past, but we can relate to as well, and it's kind of in a fantasy setting, then I think that's all for the better. Yeah. I, I, I like it to be like an open invitation to make players all around the world make uh, history yeah. campaigns that can add to the history. Mm. I'm, I'm excited to see the new characters, special characters. Oh, like. Well, it's gonna be so fun. I don't think we will see them for a while. No, not until after ETC. No. But oh, yeah, on that note, ETC um, version 1.0 is coming soon. Yeah. What's our hopes and dreams for 1.0? I hope that they let my rave army be <laughs> as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they change your rave army. <laughs> I really like double banishment. Divine banishment. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> but on that note, what as of being serious, what I really hope from this 1.0 is that every single army will have, you know, their optimal builds decreased in yeah. effectivity. Yeah, yeah. I think the high up gun line is nothing a little bit. Exactly, and the guest star from the vampire yeah. army. Yeah, the Strigoi lists are really, really good. Yes, it's really good. And just abuse lists. But at the same time, at the same time, it's like, maybe if you go to tournament and it's like, okay, no comp, you expect it. Yeah, you expect exactly. that kind of dick yeah, puncher. Yeah, that's true. But if, you, if you're playing a friendly game, then it's just kind of like, you don't want to have fun with just that kind of list. I mean, yeah. I, I have one wish, and that's a general risk, wish, that they don't do anything radical. They only do like small changes. Like, don't make something to double the cost, or yeah. like say maybe this unit of let's say else have one too many special rules. Let loose like or let them stay one point uh, like higher for the cost yeah. or something, and and then to say next time was that enough? No, let's just make it one point more. Yeah, I I think that's what they're gonna do. From I mean I I I'm on the forum pretty regularly and I, I try and try and get some inference into what's going to happen and from what I can see it's on the whole it's going to be all it's going to be small changes just tweaks um, I think the biggest change for what I hear is going to be Warriors of the Dark Gods are going to change in a big way but we'll see I don't know anything 100% just listening to you guys I, I must say that I really the, the reason why I'm looking really looking forward to this edition is that for the first time in a long time we will actually have a patch or edition that will last for a long time yeah, it's gonna be so good. it will be possible for people to establish a local meta and react to it and maybe it will allow us to see that some of the builds like the ones we mentioned before maybe they're not that good yeah you're so right you're so right like if we have if we have like three or four months to kind of establish a meta and get an, and then we can react to it and then completely 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 because people be able to test lists yeah and and play with things and get better and yeah you're so right you're so so right yeah but you know all of you guys listening I'm I'm taking for granted that you actually look at the forums <laughs> and you actually are <laughs> interested in this otherwise you would not be listening to us but. I must say that almost on a day-to-day -day basis, I see people posting threats concerning a specific unit or build that they've had trouble, you know, dealing with. Yeah. And I really hope that it won't get them blown all the way, or you know, because you need to learn. Yeah. You need to, as I said before, you need to establish this meta. So people, please don't go all you know call raid trains and stuff like that because yeah. don't don't overreact on first glance give it some time it will take some time yeah for, for an example is that in some part of the map uh, 
people are playing a lot of Marsus and large characters on like flying dragons, manticores, chariots, so on. So in a team tournament, uh, this guy Empire Summerstyle just bringing everything he can oh, to bring <laughs> down Marsus. He won the tournament. Yeah, that's meta changing. Yeah, exactly. So maybe next time people won't bring as many monsters. And what have we been doing for the last three weeks? <laughs> playing gun lines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was playing against this specific guy. Um, I'm not calling any names, but he was actually on the balance board. And uh, after... <laughs> no names. <laughs> yeah. but, but I had a Sylvan Elves army. And yes, I was abusing the 0 0.99 uh, versions <laughs> of the Treemans. And Tree Fathers, sorry. Drink. Drinking. I don't have a bit. But I, I got punished. But what I really figured out was I should have dealt with his army in a totally different way. Hmm. Focused on the objectives. Yes, Stay focused alive. on the objectives and not to be so afraid of move. I had a big unit of um, Forest Guards. And to all you Sylvan players, I had my Forest Guards, 34 of them, with a BSB and a Spear of Cataran. It was amazeballs. It so was the great. best <laughs> unit I had in all the games. Yeah, it I actually really like them. People did not expect it. Yeah, so um, we're pretty excited. What would I like about 1.0? Okay, like individual changes. I want to see the Slayers change. I think they're really, really good. I think they're a bit too good. Maybe make them can't take a banner, so they can't score. Yeah, and that'll make them a bit fairer for the objectives. Because you sit on an objective and they just don't move. That's hard. I'd like to see the lizardmen get a little bit of a buff. I think they're a bit, bit rubbish. I don't really know. Like we talked today, we just said, how do you play the lizardmen? Like what? How do you play them? Are they called lizardmen? Fuck. Soaring ancients. Oh. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> um, I'd like to see the vampires get a boost. The actual vampires, not the army, just the vampires. So, so, so what are they called? The vampire vampire Counts? Oh, uh, they're still called they're them. They're still called oh. Vampire Counts. Oh, <laughs> Covenant. That's the army, but I want to see the vampire counts get boost. Oh, okay, okay. They've got three wounds, and they just get killed. They just get killed. And I'd, like to, I'd like to see them be a model where you pay 600 points. And he's just gonna bite your dick off. <laughs> like, I just wanna, I just wanna, I wanna pay the points for him. I want it to be good. I don't wanna pay four hundred points and just see him getting stomped into the ground by a hero or executioners. All that blood. Yeah, exactly. So that that's my free my free wishes. I also like to see high elves get a little bit of a nerf, despite being a high elf player. But we'll see. So yeah, um, we're gonna have a quick break here. Although, because it's now a pro podcast, it's all going to be one episode. So we're just going to take a quick break while we gather the troops for the next part. So yeah, have a go get a cup of tea or something. Yes. King. Is that a song? <laughs> it's the only famous classical music from Norway ever. It's Norwegian? Yes. Okay. We're a Danish podcast, bro. Then we need the. Uh, oh, there's some. Is there a good Danish one? There's a lot of good Danish okay. ones. Okay, you have to send me it and we can put it on the podcast. We, we are finding music for the <laughs> Oh, we're music. on! We're on! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, welcome back again. Uh, we had a quick break. Um, so, n more exciting news! What's happening in May? Amazon Tournament! No, what's it called? It's called Amazon Podcast Presents. Amazon Amazon Hammer 1. <laughs> Emma Hammer. Emma Hammer 1. It's a shame that we're using the word hammer because this is not really relevant anymore. Yes. 
It's from Hammer Time. Hammer Time. Hammer Time. It has nothing to do with any known games. Apart from Night Page. Yeah, yeah, of course, but... <laughs> but Ooh. the name has no, you know... <laughs> no hidden meaning. No. Okay. Amma Hammer 1. What is Amma Hammer 1? Amma Hammer 1 is... It's really easy to say, Amma it, it, It's a start of an era of tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> it's our first tournament. So, we are Amma Time Podcast, and we're presenting our new tournament to you. It's going to be running on the 5th of June in Copenhagen. It co- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's twenty five hundred points. It's out of the book, no comp. Just come and play with your models. Um, all the deployment scenarios is the same. Um, it's yeah, pretty much that's it. We have thirty places. Ten people signed up already, so we have a tournament now. So it's definitely going ahead. Um, painting, just paint your models. We don't really care. Just have them. Three pillars, paint everything. Um, yeah, we don't. We're not gonna have a painting prize, so so no stress if you haven't got painting models. Uh, yeah, I, it's pretty basic stuff. One thing that we would really like to do is we want to stream the tournament live on the internet on the Night Age site, and if we can get the infrastructure to do this, that's why we want three pillars minimum. We figure. If it's on a video, they can't really. See, you can't see the detail anyway. But three colors is probably enough to, to at least see what they are. And we like them to be on movement trays as well, just because we have a movement tray sponsor. We should probably shout out Magnetic Movement Trays. They're sponsoring the event. Um, if they're on movement trays, then it's easier to move around the table, so it's easier for us to talk about it if if we are streaming. With a uh, We'd also like to say that if you want to use unit fillers, then that would be, that's fine. Just three colors again. Uh, what you see is what you get. Again, completely fine. If you uh, if you have Chaos Warriors with halberds and they've got shields, we don't mind. That's fine. Because if we are streaming it, then it doesn't matter so much because it's going to be zoomed out. Maybe do some close-up shots, but it's, it's not so bad. Um, we'd like you to submit your lists to amatimedk at gmail.com no later than the 22nd of May and this is also because uh, if we, we want to see the list so that we can make some good pairings and also when you submit your lists give us your experience on a scale of 1 to 10 um, and this is again just so that we, if we're streaming we want to have a good solid game we don't want to match up a really hard list with a really good player against a guy that's inexperienced with a poor list so we're going to judge your lists and look at how experienced you are so that we can match you up against a good player which means that we're going to have a good quality of game to the live stream. I have a question. Yes. Is, is, is that only for the first game, or that's it's only going to be the first game, and it's, okay. to an extent it's also going to be random. So we're probably going to have two or three calls depending on how many people we have. So, so you have like five people who say they're really experienced, five people that say they're not so experienced, and five people that say they're inexperienced. Then we'll put them into a pool together, and we'll do it randomly. But I, we haven't exactly worked it out, but we just want a general idea, really, of what list people are running, so we can also talk about it on the podcast, and how experienced you are as a player, so that we can match you up for the first game against someone who's equal. And obviously after the second game, it'll just be Swiss Swiss draw. And uh, it starts at 9.30, uh, registration at 9 o'clock, three games, no food, 100 kroner, that's like £10 if you're coming from somewhere else. We have someone from Sweden coming, Casimir. He's coming back to play. Casimir. Uh, with his Undying Dynasties. Nice. He's got some really nice models. So check out the podcast for some future updates on the pictures and stuff. Um, I don't think we have anything else to talk about with, uh, with the tournament. That's what, pretty much it. Yeah, what's the venue? It's at Faro Cigar in the centre of Copenhagen. It's like a huge hobby shop. They have everything in there. Like uh, you probably know was more than me. They have like magic cards and board games and all they, all the miniatures they, they, in the world. They, they have they have everything that sounds like it's nerd. Yeah, it's a, it's a it, nerd it, store. <laughs> if it's collectible, it, with a reason, of course. Yeah. They have it: comic yeah. books, live role playing, and yeah, yeah everything. everything. So that that's where we're doing it. Um, if you'd like to join the tournament, just 
send me an email amatimedk at gmail.com and I can send you all the information um, if you're on Facebook you can find the tournament um, page it's an event page and it's called Amatime Podcast Presents Amahammer One <laughs> in inverted commas with a I for one you can probably find it or just send me an email and I'll send you it and you can sign up there um, you can send me the the money on mobile pay and it, once you send me the money on mobile pay you are then signed up and we do not offer refunds so please be sure that you are attending if you would like to send me money because I won't send you it back what I'll about, spend it on beer what about people who does not have mobile pay if mobile pay is a Danish bank application it is you so can't get it in other countries I don't think so. Okay, so if you're not on mobile pay, then I will send you can send me an email again, amatimedk at gmail.com, and I will send you my bank details and then you can wire me some money. And that is completely okay as well. Just just bear in mind that it's not immediate and if we are at a point where there's twenty nine people signed up and you send me the money over bank transfer, it might take two, three days to get through and someone might take your spot. If, that, if someone takes your spot, then you'll get a refund, obviously. But hopefully, that won't it won't come to that. We really want people to go to this tournament. Yeah. Because we want more 9th age tournaments in yeah, Denmark. For sure. So if you have your time, you want really come to this tournament. Bang up about it. Yeah. Yeah, support us, support the community, support 9th age. The only way that this hobby is going to progress is if we have more and more tournaments. <coughs> And obviously this is a tournament game, it's also a fluff game, but the way that the hobby's going to progress is if we have more and more tournaments. So we really, really would love as many people as possible to come and support this event. And to support the event, we want people to come play. So please, please come and support us. Yeah, this is also a huge call out to all the confused players in, in Denmark at least. <laughs> Because there's a lot of people who don't know where to go. Is it Kings of War? Kings of War. Is it Adrius, Adrian? Yeah, we don't Correct. say that. Yeah. <laughs> Age of something. Or should I just put it all away? Or should I play 40k? Or yeah. just maybe you should see this as a big opportunity yeah. to, to get, get stuff. Yeah. Because you can play with, you know, if you have an army, you can play almost any, you know, any setup you want. Yeah. Because everything is roughly balanced. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's something that's really Give important. Some people have been. I, I always try and comment on the Facebook groups when people are like, oh, I'm going to rebase my army, or uh, like, is anyone playing Night Phage right now? What's good? Or I always try and comment and say, everything is good. Come and play. Come and try it. It's good fun. Don't rebase your army. Keep everything on squares. Just come and play Night Phage. It's really good. And this, this is the first opportunity right now because this is going to be the first tournament in Denmark that's using 1.0 rules. It's the first, the first opportunity that you can come and play 1.0 and start from scratch. And we can really get behind it with everyone. And yeah, just don't rebase your army. Play Night Phage. It's so much fun. Like, just just come try it, please. And bring your friends. Yeah, and bring your, your friends. Your little brothers, your cat, we don't even care. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can, we can uh, if, if that's the case, if you want to bring a friend who's never played before, then this is a perfect opportunity to come and try like just say experience level zero and yeah it's it's friendly yeah and people will like yeah yeah it's it's gonna be like it's gonna be friendly and yeah we're gonna bring some there's gonna be some people who are there trying to win with some hard lists and probably some people practicing for etc probably all of us are practicing for etc warm up at nifcon but but you you gotta get your dick punch and you're gonna end up in the bottom where you'll have a nice games yeah or you just the reason that, this is the exact reason that we're doing the experience thing. So the guys with no experience are going to be playing the guys with no experience for the first game, and that's going to make it a lot easier for that first game. Just relax, take your time, and just play some night age. So yeah, that's the tournament. Um, again, email us at amatimedk at gmail .com if you want to get any information. Um, um, right now, I want to go through the list that I'm gonna use for the what do you call it, like the the standing list, and maybe that's gonna give you a bit of inspiration or a little bit of motivation or give you an idea of the kind of list that I, at least I'm expecting to see. So let's hear it. This is my uh, my new my new army, my vampire covenant. <laughs> maybe I should say a little bit first, like what I've been doing. So. 
Um, I've painted now. I've painted all my barrow guard. I've painted all my skeletons. Apart from one unit filler, it's almost done. You can see my uh, user blog on the night page form. I've almost finished Polly the Varkalak. She's <laughs> she's nearly done now. She's got a face. She needs some eyes and she needs some hair and a nose and that's about it. And then she's going to be done. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty. I'm really excited. I did a base. I've got a secret project. I can't tell you about it. It's really good. It looks so cool. I'm so excited. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you about it. Do you have any hints? Any hints? Okay, it's one of the units in the Vampire Covenant Army book. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think it's a special choice. Okay. It's really cool, and it's really, it's not broken. It's good, but it's not broken. Yeah, I'm not going to say anymore. Okay. It's, it's, it's going to be exciting. Okay, a special choice, though. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'll give you, I'll give you a hint, Rasmus, because, because you, this will help you a little bit. I used the model that you last gave me as part of my conversion, and I will say no more. Do you remember what the last model was that you gave me? I think it was the demonic mount uh, of uh, once time knowing now it's called pestilence. Yeah. Horse with the lord with the yeah. What's called sight. Yeah. That that was the that was the model. So let's just leave it at that. So my list is. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to drink so much now. <laughs> I'm not going to remember any of the names. Okay, I know the first few. So, it's a Vampire Count, which is Lamia. And Lamia gives distracting if there's no armor. And it also gives... You have to accept challenges from a Lamia Vampire Count. And you have to take a leadership test at minus one leadership. And if you fail, you re-roll your hits and your wounds in the challenge. So minus one and minus one for fear? Yes. Okay, so minus two if you don't do yes. psychology. Yes. I think you still take it if you mean psychology. Oh yeah, you're going to get minus one if you mean psychology. And she has the four plus water and the blade of red thirst. So that gives her vampiric three plus. So every, if you, every wound you do in combat... With a blade of red thirst, you roll a dice. On a three plus, you get a wound back. And if you're at four wounds, you get the wounds to the unit that you're in. And she is a level three vampire on necromancy. And she also has the commandment power, which gives weapon skill five to the unit that she's in. That's really good. Yeah, it's similar to the Undying Dynasty's power. That's good, but close. Yeah. So the second character is a vampire courtier. Who's the BSB? Also on Lamia, so distracting as well. Um, this vampire has the Mask of Innocence power, which gives everything in base contact, or the units in base contact, minus one leadership. Right. So if you're fighting in a challenge with the Lamia vampire, the, the Lord, you're at minus three. <laughs> and the bonus you get was what? Distracting if we have no armor. Yeah, but if we, if you fail and lose uh, your you re reroll your hits and wounds. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. That's and really and you really also good. you also take your fear tests at minus three. So you're probably hitting on fives. Yeah. With distracting. Yeah, hitting on fives. Sixes. Unless you're an elf. Sixes. Because you get hitting me on fives minus one. Yeah. So hit me on sixes. I have no armor, but I've got four plus four on the on the uh, vampire count. And that vampire, the BSB vampire, also has fences blades, so weapons go ten. <laughs> and the gemstone amulet, which gives me a four plus water save against the first wound, fifteen points, and level one necromancy. So they're both those both those characters are obviously going in the same unit. I'll get to that in a second. And uh, the hen that have level two necromancer on fire with a dispel scroll. My core is two bat swarms, two bat swarms, three times five die wolves. I think they're... I'm just going to drink. I'm not sure what they're called now. I think they're just wolves. I don't know either. Then two times three zombies with musician banners. Oh, two times thirty zombies. Yeah. Then my special is thirty barrow guard with halberds. Ooh. So, Whimsical 5. Whimsical 5. 
Wait, their weapons are five right now, but they also get plus one to hit from the banner of the Barrow Kings. So weapons are five, plus one to hit with halberds, and then I have the Court of the Damned with Unholy Dominion. And Which unho does Unholy Dominion gives one unit within six inches plus one weapon skill, and one enemy unit within six inches minus two initiative. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm um, I'm um, skill six plus one to hit. I'm um, initiative three, and enemies around me are minus two initiative. That's really good. Yeah, and it's for like a four plus water chariot. And bear in mind that they have multiple wounds too against any every cavalry. single thing that's scoring. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah. It's pretty thick punching. So, uh, lethal strike? Yeah, yeah. Lethal, lethal strike lethal and multiple ah. wounds, two against infantry and cavalry. Yeah. It's quite good, right? So, the only thing they don't like is. The, uh, the Terracotta Tomb Guard? <laughs> but this is strength 5. I'm not sure. I think maybe the only thing they don't like is combined charge. Yeah. Chariots striking initiative 10. Yeah. Like six carriers, chariots. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Go, 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 yeah. go. And um, I also have a Varkalak with three plus Vampiric in my special. And then the rare is a Shrieking Horror, which is the old Terror Vest. It sounds both like a really good list and a really fun list. Yeah, I think so as well. Because if, if you. If you can hit the vampires, they'll die. Because they don't have any save. The BSB has no armor save. So they don't like hatred? No, they really don't like hatred. Or poison. Plus one to hit. Yeah. They don't like poison. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, they really don't like poison. Uh, but yeah, like, it's fun, right? And you can be like, okay, take your test on minus three. If you pass it, I'm going to die. If you fail it, you're going to die. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's, that's my... The, the gamblers list. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to uh, the Thundercocks podcast. I don't know if you guys listen to it. No. No, it's a podcast from England. A guy called Jack Chapman. Um, I had a chat with him the, this week, actually. And uh, we were talking a little bit about vampires, because I've been listening to his podcast. And this this list is inspired by his, his list that he ran for a tournament in England. And I kind of stole it and made it better. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and he, we were just talking about some like podcast stuff, like how like how we can make it better yeah. and bring bring that on that shit. I have double banishment empire. Some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I, th I think you you put my dick in with that. <laughs> but yeah, just a quick shout out to Thundercut Podcast for giving us a help some help this week, both with my list and for like the podcast stuff. So yeah, all of you have any comments on my my list? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many tree men do you want to be? Uh, okay, it should be noted that I have started an Ogre Kingdoms. No, sorry, drinking. Ogre Khans. <laughs> Shit. Also, Ogre. also, I should say, the Blade of Red Thirst, as well as healing D3 plus... I think it's D3 plus 3 Barrow Guard per turn. Every time I do a wound, I get another Barrow Guard back. That's so good. Uh, yeah. As, as I was saying, I'm starting a, an Ogre Khan's list, and this is a list that I'm. Contum yeah, I, 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 I could probably deal with it, but what I see as the weakness of this list is maybe. Oh, it's maybe not a problem at all, because you have the Call of the Damned, you yeah. have the Walkalock. Walkalock? Poly, poly and, the yeah, and the shrieking horror. Oh, cool, cool. So I was gonna say that all of the those they they will feel a bit lonely, because the thing is with monsters in this game, which is both the the blessing and the curse, mm -hmm. is that they always work like a hundred percent better when there's two of them. Yeah, each well, of them. Yeah, I, I could go with double barkle. The, the thing is that anyone who has the, the means to remove monsters will very quickly be able to decide which one of your big yeah. models that, that will do the most harm to you yeah, and yeah. deal with it. Well, I think you, in the vampire army you need the Shrieking Horror 
because you need the screen. You need but, the screen to take off the armor, and I can always hide it, and it still flies. And the Varkalak has regen four plus. So, but they, they fulfill totally different roles. Yeah, and what I'm saying right. is that when you're playing against an army, um, like every single army right now can, if they want to, deal with monsters. Yeah, this, they have the tools. Or be able to do yeah, that. should be able. Uh, otherwise, you should look at your army list. <laughs> <laughs> list. Or, or, or just let's let's call them single model units. Yeah, yeah. But but they will be able to pick out what they want. Yeah. At least when you have two of each, you uh, you you can with some reliability be able to say, okay, one of them is gonna make it. The, the, yeah. only, the only thing I'm seeing is like an Orca Khan character swinging in the mist versus those vampire characters. <laughs> What's the weapon skill of an ogre khan? Uh, the ogre khan himself yeah. is six. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his, his, his the, the big yeah, it's a bit of so he's, a, a he's deep, deep he's hitting my he's hitting both vampires on fives. Yes, and if he fails his fear, he causes his fear. He causes. Okay, fear. so he won't fail his. But, but he's still taking his 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 reroll to hit and wound test of minus two. But he has five attacks. Initiative nine. Leadership nine, but it's very right now. A lot of the net lists, what they do is they give the big name, which gives you a five up region, yeah. but it also gives you stupidity. So a, a <laughs> lot of a lot of oh, people. I, I don't know if it's solid or it's not. I, I've used it, but it works because the ogre cons they need to put a lot of magic into dealing wounds. Yeah, because. Unlike a lot of other models, they they don't come with any protection in it. Yeah. So so either you need to so go all expensive. You're top as five. I yes. am top as five oh, with five wounds. Five five so it's pretty solid. But the thing is that any unit with great weapons is okay. dangerous to him. Yeah. I got halberds, but turn five. It's still very yeah. dangerous. So I. But here you one plus one as well. That's true. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that. Any means of getting any more protection, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah five plus regen is really strong. But my ogre Khan with the aluminium bat of hell, <laughs> the Kadaki small. Is that was called? Yeah, I think you will have some issues with it no. if you do I'll not. Ch- kill I'll him. just challenge you out and kill you. You will not kill him. Was he safe? Uh, it's not the safe. That's the problem. It's the build with the. The, the mammoth hide armor, you will never strike with anything above strength 5. I'm only strength 5. Yes. But then how will you kill him? I'll grind you down. I will kill you very fast because I am strength yep. 7 with the 3 wounds. Let, 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 no, no guys. You would kill his unit and run him down. Yes. That's yeah. true. <laughs> okay, okay, issue. The Roman Khan will swing in the mist. Hopefully hitting the vampire. <laughs> I think that uh, and, 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 and the unit of Paragon is going to vaporize. How many, how many attacks does the Khan have? Five. Five attacks. And you, you hit me on fives, so assuming that you pass your One and a half. Yeah, so one and a half hits. You're probably passing. You wound me on two, so let's say one, one and a half wounds, I'm probably going to save one. So maybe you do one wound on me, right? Yes. It then multiplies into the three. Okay. That's that's why the that's why I say I want the vampires to have four wounds. Because they get, they just yeah. get but, but, but Henry, that's, I'm sorry, it's okay to say bullshit, okay? It's bullshit. <laughs> because how would I deal with you otherwise? But, but, but the thing is, Henry ought to pay 100 points for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, but you get a lot for the deal. I think to get back on the list and not talk about Ogre Khans totally, I think my list right now with two uh, Rock Aurochs. Yeah. If I took the two of them, yeah, smashed them into that unit, I would make on average twelve impact hits at strength seven. Would I? Would I let you charge that unit? Of course you would. <laughs> really? Because you would just say, okay, What's I need the t- to. The, uh, the, 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 the last ones that you have, what are they called? Uh, those you're talking about, what are they the, called? The gouts. Rock aurochs. The rock aurochs, they were shrimp zombies about. Moo! <laughs> 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 the mini gouts. I don't yeah, know, we, we call them cows. I think the, I, I want to fight the, the aurochs with the Varkalak and the Shrieking Horror with the Shrieking. I do not think you want to do that. No? Maybe the Shrieking Horror with the shooting, but 
the rock orcs are deadly to other monsters. What was the leadership? Of the I, I hear a challenge coming eight, up. Eight. Eight. <laughs> eight. 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 But if you, if I, I get a charge, if game. I get a charge, you are done with all monsters. I get. I think I get. I, I can't remember exactly how the screens work with the. I have no screen. idea how the screen. I'm pretty works. sure it's the number of wounds, hits, or six plus the number of wounds. I think it's maybe it's six plus the number of wounds is equal to the strength. I can't remember. So it's stronger the more wounds you have. Yeah, and it's against your leadership. Okay. So it's like I'm wounding you on a two plus, and I get lots of hits, and you get no arm saves. Is it multiple wounds? No. And how many wounds do you have? Six. Six. So it's pretty good. Yeah. But again, I'm saying, of, co of course you can shoot it down, but I will kill you in close combat. Because I have a ton of a chance. Yeah, look. Yeah, do, you, do you think the Varkalite, do you not think the Varkalite will beat the Rock Aurochs in close combat? How many attacks does the Aurochs have? Uh, six by themselves. Yeah, and then the Ogres on top, right? Yes. So you have, but, but again, my point is, of course, this is all up to the game and playing the game but they have three to three impact hits i'm not going to charge seven i think i'm faster than you but i will no i'm i'm movement seven with strip threat movement seven yes yeah, so i'm not going to let you attack me i think i'm movement seven oh wait let me just check i'm just like this is really bad radio but, but uh, either yeah. way Fuck like movement eight but either way, <laughs> either way, I'm hitting you on fours and I'm wounding you on twos. You're strength seven. I am strength seven. Yeah, but I got. And I am stubborn. But I got four plus regen and vampire three plus. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 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 how many? You will make three hits, which turns into two and a half wounds. Yeah. Which are a half for the regen. Regen. 1.25 wounds. And then I like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm probably gonna, probably gonna heal that one wound. <laughs> yeah. And I, I hit you at hit you on a three plus with five attacks, with hatred, and shot six. There is something wrong right here. I'm paying 255. <laughs> <laughs> Considering the fee, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, I'm a much better general and player than Henry, so I will get the charge and get my six automatic hits at strength seven, and my strength bonus on the lands on my ogre <laughs> sitting on the top. Okay, okay and then okay. he's dead. So th th this is the shrieking horror. So chilling shriek, parts of the special rule of shooting attack, and you can use it in combat. It does 18 range, and it can be used if you march. It does, it, regardless of whether it's used in shooting, combat, kind of shooting cause automatic hit to the target for each wound the model has. So you get six hits. These are resolved at strength 10, and have arm piercing six and magical attacks. And when you, when you roll to wound, you substitute the toughness for leadership. So I have six, six hits, wounding you on a two plus. How many wounds do you have, Oliver? Six. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Can you use to expand presence? Uh, yes. So with the discipline standard and the lord, it's leadership two. Yeah. But it's still full up. We're you on four plus. Yes. No serious. You can I never do good. any worse than that. That's yeah. really, really yeah. good. Yeah, it's good. But it's flight. It's flight eight. Which is so right. does he have to hit? No, hits automatically. No. So it's really good. Be gone, steam tank. <laughs> yeah. Be gone, free man. Yeah. You get water. I five up. I don't care. <laughs> it's two rounds. But it's two hundred and thirty points, and it's going to get shot off. It's going to get regen six plus. Now he looks at the rules. Toughness six, wound six. Yeah. And but it's, it's just... a monster with fly. But it's yeah. you, it's also the hits. I'm, I'm not sure that flying is a good rule in this uh, hair. <laughs> No, but it does the number of hits that you have wounds. So if you take a couple of wounds off it, it does less hits. Yes, that's true. Oh, so you want to hit it with a cannonball? Yeah, it's gonna. It's not gonna kill it with one cannonball, but it. It, it, it makes it crawl it. into cover. Yeah. <laughs> but but here, here comes the invocation. Yeah, heal it. <laughs> Yay! Yep. I can heal all my models. Yeah, it invocates one wound per spell. I don't care. And I have, I have two times invocation. In the list. 
still, if you can get it where you need it. But overall, I really like the list. I really like the list as well. I was actually going to bring it today, but then I didn't. <laughs> I don't want to play with my unpainted models, and I don't have a Shrieking Horror yet. I have one, but I haven't built it. What is the toughness of the Graveguard? Uh, Four. Again? Graveguard. Oh, okay. That, that, now, right now, we've been playing again uh, against Christopher, all of us, and he's playing the Terracotta Army. He's oh, making, so good. Yes, he's making the, uh, the Tomb Guards. Yeah. Uh, unit. Should, should we should we whistleblow his list? Or? No, I don't think so. But no. re regardless, no, maybe, maybe, toughness no. five, uh, and that's really good. Yeah, yeah. I don't say anymore. Yeah, the necro the necropolis guard and toughness five are really good. Yeah. I I took it off, but <laughs> it took me a while. It took me four turns of shooting. Yes, and I think that's what your great guards they lack. Their toughness four. Maybe that's for a later yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's the next episode. So we've been we've been forty minutes now. So we have a quick break, and we're gonna have, come back with probably one more segment. And uh, yeah, I hope it's hope it's more professional this time. I'm getting pretty drunk actually. Haven't eaten. Same here. Yeah. So it's it's going well. Let's have a quick break. Pizza, so thank you for that. How much do I owe you, by the way? 55? 55, okay. <laughs> and Oliver came back, and Oliver, what did you say to me when you came back? I was like, Didn't the rules are here. The rules are here. And you guys were just like, oh, we, we don't, we don't, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> we, we're, we're helping we need to, a game. We, we need to finish this game. <laughs> And I understood it as we can't focus if you say anything about the new rules. It's like, well, so yeah, it's like, we, do we play like the new rules now, like half it through, or do we carry <laughs> on? Now? So yeah, new rules came. Um, we've had half an hour to quickly flick through the yeah, new rules. Yeah, digest it. And uh, yeah, so basically, we want to talk a bit about how the a, a quick scan, how it in, affects the. The armies we play. Yeah. You want to take it first? Yes. Uh, I would like to start with the, the Sylvan Elves. Both Henry and I play Sylvan Elves. Yeah. Uh, so we have them in common. It, it seems to me that the changes are solid. It goes a bit both ways. Yeah. Like, for example, the treatment, the shooting is actually a bit better. worthwhile now. Yeah. While it was, you know... Yeah. Much, much, much the shoot is yeah is good. I, I have to admit there's some strange changes. I do not understand this. Yeah, it's it's expensive. A, they they've gotten better at fighting in close combat, but it's twenty three points. Uh, and if it, if it was twenty. Yeah, I know, yeah. but that's just weird because yeah. they're shooting in it. Yeah, and they're competing against the uh, sentinels Sel that got a bit cheaper. So I think that the Sentinels will be the go-to unit yeah. because they're almost, well, not almost, they're nine points cheaper per model than the Pathfinders. You, you tell your Sentinels every time. Yes, you would now. Two um, units in red. You're going to see that in every list. Yeah. And a bit of, I think this is really random, but the Great Elk went from movement nine to movement eight. It's fucking ridiculous. Which is very weird because every single piece of cavalry in the army it's is nine. movement nine. I guess it's I guess it's like trying to say, okay, if you want to take a big bus with a great elk, you're gonna be a little bit slower. Yeah, but so the, the impact is just not that But what, what was what was really good is what they called Forest Rangers. Yeah. They they've gotten gradually better with the last couple of editions, yeah. but now they're sufficiently cheap. And they're better than all other elven heavy infantry. I'm sorry, they are. They've got two attacks, Leash of Nine, Bodyguard. They're not better than White Lions. In They're cheaper than White Lions, and they do more damage than White Lions. But they... they but, hit, this, but, if, no, if, but, okay, but, listen, listen, listen. Equal numbers, 
Both hit on fours. Both wound on twos. No. Both negate the other's armor save. No, you, you're neglecting the very important thing here. The thing that Sylvan Elves have been begging for is a what do you call it? A solid way of dealing with monsters. Oh, you, did you lose multiple wounds? You never had multiple never wounds. Okay, well that's the only difference then. No. Furthermore, the white lines are one extra strength. That makes a difference when you're fighting stuff with high toughness, but and against each other. No, against each other, that's a different and story. And Silver Elves have two attacks. Yeah. And white lines only have one. Yeah, that's true. But for points for points, I think the forest but guard. They're really thing. good. Yeah, really, yeah. really good. And I, I could, I could ones. very much see them being run in most lists with a BSB with a Spear of Cataron. Yeah, yeah. Really because good. if you give them distracting. All of a sudden, they're really good. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter if the toughness three if they're never hit because yeah. their weapons go five. Yeah. Okay, let, we're gonna yeah, go through yeah, real that's, quick. Yeah. That, that's that's the on the on that's the face face that world. we both yeah we both, reacted yeah, to. Like, Whoa, Horace Guard. Okay. Uh, Ogres. Ogres. No, no. Let's take one of yours. Okay, one of mine. Vampire counts. Um, in general, everything got a little bit worse, <coughs> a little bit more expensive. Some of the rules got. Changed a little bit. There wasn't. I really wanted to see the vampires get better. Didn't. I really want to see the zombie dragon get the colossal upgrade get better. It got ten points cheaper and didn't really do anything. What extra weapon skill? I'm still not going to pay for it for a double base size. No, but to me it sounds like they wanted to react to the ghast star. Yeah, they and did. They really and, did. And it seems like they did it they in a away, very elegant. Away, yeah, they took away distracting yeah. from the. From They're the, very elegant. Tullius teeth against them with the monstrous infantry. Yes. I think, in general, I think the vampires' changes seem fair, but I would like to see the vampire count get four wounds. A bit more expensive. Supernatural reflexes, a bit more expensive. And I would like to have seen the zombie dragon colossal upgrade be better. But it's getting there, it's getting there. And okay, that's pretty much it for vampires. Yeah, I think they all got a little bit expensive. But ogres, ogres, that's... I, um, I must say I'm impressed. Yeah. It's a lot of the small tw tweaks, it's and it's, it works. <laughs> it's just it, a long time. And, and honestly, it seems like they've been, uh, they've been looking at lists at, and seeing what are the ogre players trying to do. And what is, what is the missing links from this being... Like solid. Yeah, and I think a bit cheaper, right? Yeah, and a bit better. For example, my my favorite example is the mammoth skin armor. Yeah. Which went from being a heavy armor, which meant that your your lord, you mostly put it on a lord, uh, would always almost have a five up uh, armor save. Yeah. At best, it could be a four plus. With a shield. Yeah. And now it's a three plus. No, no, no. Yeah, we have the plus one armor save, heavy armor that's four plus, and then shield no, three No, 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 because it was a heavy armor. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. So now you have heavy armor, and plus one armor Oh, save. yes, of course. So it's four plus, yeah, it's plus and one three armor now. Yes, and it's yeah. five points cheaper, yeah. okay, which, makes, which makes, it possible, uh, makes it possible for you to, to to look at some different builds now, yeah. because it was very set in stone Gives before. Gives you a few more options. Yes, and very, very important, <laughs> the cannons now actually, um, they don't get minus one for pivoting. Uh, and shooting, yeah. which was the, that. the yeah that was the main reason I would never ever take them. The the other monsters they get minus one, uh, sorry <laughs> minus ten in point cost, yeah. which is okay. It's uh, you know not that important. Yeah. Um, another big difference is the mercenaries, and. I don't know if I'm happy about it, but they lost Weapon Master. Weapon Master is now one of the rules that they have to choose. So they have to buy Weapon Master and all the upgrades? No, they don't buy it. It's They get to pick two special rules. Okay. And Weapon Master is one of them. But they have to buy all the weapons. Here comes the thing. If they choose Weapon Master, they get one pick of uh, weapons for free, okay. apart from Iron Fists. And the thing is, you always want the Iron Fists. And if you give Iron Fist, every single model you have will cost 70 points. Too much. It's too much. It's too m darn much. They're good, though. They're Very really good. good. Okay, so that's Ogres. 
Um, yes, I'm, I'm very ha- I, I have to say yeah. that I'm very happy that they didn't change the Yetis, they didn't change the Kinitas. Yeah, they're, they're uh, pretty solid choices. You know, yeah, uh, when you look at other armies, the solid choices, they they were tweaked a bit, but I think they realized that the Ogas uh, army, they, they needed them. Yeah, I think so as well. I it was not because they were too good, they were just good for the army. Yeah. Um, also, oh sorry, that's very important, very important, we're talking about magic items. Yeah. Uh, two of the magic items, apart from the other uh, armor thing I told you about, is uh, the Ring of Nyangai, or whatever you call it. <laughs> it's... Um, should, should we go to translation? You can't remember. Nyangai, Nyangai. Basically, it makes the ver- wearer and its unit immune to all spells apart from all spells in one turn. And now they can elect to turn it on after the channels and the magic flux work, uh, are rolled. So you kind of pick and choose if it's a bad exactly. magic flux. Exactly. Yeah, and doing. the same goes for the Demon Heart, which was, which is only 25 points now. Which is a massive difference. I, you know, it, it's it's really big. Okay. I, I can't say it enough. So, uh, the blind eye of Nyang Nyai? Nyang Nyai? what? No, wait. Nyai? Nyang Nyai? Nyang Nyai? Ching Chong. What's it? Nyang Nyai? Come on, Nightfish team. Give me a name that I could pronounce. Nyang. Yeah. No, okay. Fluff Never team. Fluff team. Fluff team. <laughs> but, sort yourselves out. But Demon Heart is. Demon Heart is really solid now, and give it gives me a. I'm sorry, but this kind of ruins the level, uh, the Lord level caster for me, because now I really want to take two level twos, one with Dispel Scroll and one with Demon Heart, because Demon Heart is so solid, and you can take the Blind Eye of Nan guy at the same time on one of the level twos. That's so you have the most solid magic defense in the game. I think it's a little bit cheap. 25 points. It's think, it's way too cheap. I think it should be 35 points. It's way too cheap because you can actually just say, I'm going to roll, you know, the, the opponent, he rolls a very high magic. Yeah. And you force him, let's say he only so has you, four. Yeah, to throw three dice for every spell. Yeah. The minimum. Yeah. Maximum, sorry. Four dice, you don't want no. to do it. Well, I don't know even know the statistics, but four dice is a yeah. no-go. You can shut that magic face down. Yeah. For 25 points, it's way too cheap. Okay, it's, uh, it, that, 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 it, no, sorry, but yeah. that's very close to being too good. Yeah, I think it's a little bit cheap. Uh, and Skull of Quet Quet is actually usable King, now King, because. King it. Clink Clink? Oh, uh, God, Ogre, Ogre Pluff Team. Yeah. Saw your shit out, we can't <laughs> pronounce any of your names. Or at least do some kind of uh, video pronounce help. Uh, but the thing is that, that uh, it's a good change. 10 points now because before you would just take the Screaming Swords for 5 points cheaper and it would give the same effect but I think it's okay. no that, it's okay yeah it's okay it's oh and by the way new change um, Sons of Al- Avalanche okay uh, that's all the guys the core guys and the characters now they're immune to fear that's a big difference yeah <coughs> and needed but I still think that the tyrant should have retained his Fear causing, they took that away. Oh, it's not. So you do get infected by the vampire now. <laughs> what do you mean? The, you know my list that we talked about earlier, yeah. with the minus three to your leadership and challenges. Yeah. You were like, well, I cause fear, so I don't, I'm not affected by fear. But now you are. I never said that. But he's immune to fear. Oh, he's immune to fear now. Oh, okay. all, no, as I said, all characters and uh, core units and mercenaries uh, are immune okay. to fear now. Okay, so it doesn't matter. No. Never mind. Okay, high one else. Yeah. So differences of hybrid elves. The Prince of Rhyme changed. Yeah. We got the we, you're allowed to be on an Elven Steed now, which is something that we asked for at the start. Um everything got a little bit cheaper in the honors section. The Cranry Tower dude got a little bit cheaper, which everyone was asking for. Um apart from that, everything else got a bit worse. The Sky Sloop got a little bit more expensive, which is fair enough. But the got better. It got but better. it got better with yeah. the bounce spell and the weapon skill minus weapon skill is twelve inches now, which is good. I think that's nice. The queen's guard strength four, not plus one to wound, not it, as good. It only makes a difference. Something six and higher. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's fair. 
it's fair. It's fair. It's I, I think fair. It, I think it's fair. Because Maximum unit size fifteen. I think completely fair. Nerfs the gun line. We we. I'm sorry, but we just have to realize that the high bones were not broken as an army apart from the shooting huh? options. Yeah, agreed. And the Grey Watchers in rare also limits you. Yeah, completely uh, fair. Again, we're both Sylvan players, so yeah. if Sentinels go to rare, yeah, yeah, it's we fair. don't see why not. Grey Watchers can use <coughs> shields. Not sure where that come from, but okay. I think the option is never gonna valid. take it. Never gonna take it. Five for some safe. I'd rather take paired yeah, weapons. But again, they have weapons to go five, don't they? Yeah. Why in the world? Yeah, you would take it for the parry, but it doesn't yeah, don't do care. anything. I don't care. I'm taking paired weapons no. still. Shields, don't bother. Take it off my page team. Um, anything else? Um, Swordmaster's got point cheaper. I yeah. think that's fair. The minimum, the five of them instead of 65 and now 70, also fair. Sea Guard can't take heavy armor. That balances them compared to Spearman. That's fair. Yeah, you need it. You yeah. really needed the, the difference. Yeah. Some of the magic items got a little bit cheaper. I still do not see the cloak of stars. It's minus, minus one to yeah. hit against. Minus one to casting yeah. spells. I don't. I don't, I'm never going to take it in case I want to buff my own unit. Yeah. I, unless you're taking like a, a no magic army, I'm never going to use it. But I think that's pretty much the only changes. They nerfed the gun line and they boosted swordmasters, and that's about it. But I think in general, I'm happy with the changes. Yes. So I think it it limits your lists in the right way, yeah. at least with the highborn elves. I Vampires, I think it's okay as well. I think in general, what we've just seen is good. Yes. It's balanced everything a bit better, but it's 0.99.4, not 1.0. No. Do we have something in store? For us, do you think so? Okay, what I know, I've been asked who wants to do a 1.0 review, and I said, Me, I want to do a high one else review. And I got told, This will be in the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to do it. So, let me just have a look at the conversation. But, um, okay, I'm thinking, um, I think it, I think it's gonna be, it can't be long, it really cannot be long. But but it just has to be. It's going to be in the next couple of weeks, and we're going to get the 1.0. Yeah. But we have to read the forum because there has to be some kind of official statement concerning the point zero point nine nine point four, whether or not we should expect a lot more changes or. If yeah, it's kind of weird that they came out with the 0.994. I'm not sure if they want the feedback or they just. Um, they just haven't maybe, got r- maybe, round to it. Like maybe, maybe they just got tired of all the <laughs> the whining. We want our rules. We yeah. want our rules. And they said, "Here you go. Here's what we have so far." Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it's kind of strange because I was like, "Oh, the, the new rules are out. What? The new rules can't be out yet." Okay. Well. Oh yeah. Wait. It's zero point nine nine. So. Yeah, I'm just, we're just looking through the what they've messaged me with. Um, they're just saying, please do a review for 1.0. Uh, it hasn't asked, hasn't said when it will be. And they say that they don't know, so I'm guessing the next couple of weeks it's going to be out. We'll have to wait and see, but this is us just doing a quick 0.99 yeah, yeah. review of our armies. So hopefully that's useful to you guys and let's see what this new edition can has yes. in store and like we mentioned in one of the earlier uh, segments segments yeah please do not start calling names or flaming or trolling or anything yeah there's no one trying to break your army and give it give it a shot but all you guys all you high one else players out there who have been dick bashing with your gun line you have been dick bashing I've been doing it as well. Now we can't do it so well, and I think that's a good thing. So don't get too angry on the forums. Now you get to do something else than shoot. Yeah. Now you have to play with white lines and sword and yeah. sword messes and actually kill people in combat. Yeah. And rhymers. And not, yeah, knights of rhymer with the thunderous charge banner. I wonder if that's still there. Okay. So yeah, 
have a good weekend and this will hopefully be out tomorrow the 16th of April and hopefully the new edition will be out next week yeah. and you have the pleasure of listening to a full Highborn Elf review in the next couple of weeks when we get round to it and when the new edition's out so keep listening enjoy the show like our SoundCloud page it'll be on SoundCloud soon once we go pro once we go pro <laughs> and uh, email us at amatimedk at gmail.com Come to our tournament on the 5th of June. It's in Copenhagen. We talked about it previously. Get in contact if you want the details and hopefully we will see you there. Yeah. Bye. So. <laughs> I've been recording a long time. My rock or rock will pay you back. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. We're back. From outer space. I just walked in to find you. Yeah, no. Huh? Never mind. <laughs> not, I can't hear you. I was singing with my mouth full. <laughs> okay. We're back. I'll edit that out. Probably won't. <clears throat> first. We are back. And From we... outer space. I just walked in to find you here without that <laughs> look upon your, your face. I should have changed that true to luck. I should have made you leave your keys. If I had known for just one second, you'd be back upon me. Oh, now go. <laughs> Walk out the door. <laughs> just turn around now. Because you're not welcome anymore. Okay, serious. What you <laughs> Stop. Am I tired? <laughs> anyway. So we've had a few beers. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> we don't need it. We don't need any music for this segment now. We've no. already got it. <laughs> Just uh, say if you like this singing. And we'll do it again. <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> New song. Whew. Okay, so we're back.